morning, each one. We welcome you to our morning worship service. A very Merry Christmas to everyone. And we're delighted to be together this Lord's Day morning as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus. And we are going to uh, just go through the announcements for this week. And we Wednesday, I will be sending around an online ministry, Lord willing. Next, Sunday, next week, Sunday school, 10 o'clock for the children. The morning service at 11. And we will be observing the Lord's table next Lord's Day morning. Be in prayer for those uh, in the prayer request section of the bulletin and the announcements and updates you'll find there this week. And it's delightful for us all to be together on this, what's turning out to be a white Christmas morning. And so it's nice that we see a little bit of snow out there. Be careful on the roads. And we're going to open our service this morning with a word of prayer. And it's great to have each one here today. We'll ask Charlie to open our meeting in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, it's wonderful to be free to worship Thee. It's wonderful to be free to celebrate the birth of our Savior. It's wonderful to know that the day that we put our trust in Thee, our future was secure in Thee. And Lord, we thank Thee for the words of victory from the cross. It is finished. The work is complete. The payment has been accepted. And we're safe in Your hands. So Lord, we thank Thee and we pray that in the new year to come that we'll be a thankful people. We realize how blessed we are. And we're, we have things that the others, the unsaved people, can't dream of. The future we have, the dreams we have in thee, and they're all secure. We thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to turn to hymn number 113. I invite you to stand if you're able. Let's sing this opening carol. God rest ye merry gentlemen. And 
in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one onto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and into the city of Nazareth into Judea, onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. And he taxed to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, and she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Christmas bell one two oh seven my mistake. <laughs> This 
sweet babe in a manger bed hath the power to raise the dead. He has keys to hell so many. In his hands the serpent's chain. At his feet every knee shall bow. As the ox and the ass to songbooks. Number 119, Gentle Mary Laid Her Child. Oh, Lord, me, 
will invite the ushers to come forward for our offering this morning. And Ben, would you lead us in prayer, please? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we that we can celebrate you today, Lord. We thank you for Christmas, and that we can come here and worship you, and that we have family and friends to have to come together on Christmas, Lord, and pray for those that couldn't have that, and pray for those that are sick, Lord, pray for those that could make it today, and bless this offering, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all men for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace 
goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is to come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known about the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard the wonder at which things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Carl. Let's turn again to another number, 106. For our message today, number 106, I'll invite you to stand if you're able. Hark the herald angels sing. <laughs> Let's take our Bibles and go back to Luke chapter 2. This is going to wake up.
And so Carl read for us the passage as we often read on this Christmas and every Christmas of the birth of the Lord Jesus. We also read in the Gospel of Matthew. We know that Matthew and Luke are two places in the New Testament that give us uh, an outline uh, in the narrative of his birth. And this morning I would like for us to think on the gifts, the gifts, the greatest gift that was ever given. And we see in verse number 10 it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And so I want us to think of the greatest gift this morning as we reflect on the birth of the Lord Jesus. And let's bow together in an opening word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word as we have it open before us. And as we study this morning, we pray, Father, that you would help us to draw close to thyself. We thank you for the birth of the Lord Jesus, that he came into the, this world and was, came in such a humble way. Not born in a palace where kings and queens and princes would be found. But Father, he was born the king of the Jews in a lowly stable and placed in a humble state in a manger. And Father, we thank you that he came, but he was the king of kings. And he is today. And Father, we thank you that he completed the work that you called him to do. We pray, Father, that you would bless each one this Christmas. We thank you for those that are tuning in on our online ministry today. We pray that you bless each home and each individual. We thank you for the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he offers us eternal life today to the whole world, whosoever will call upon him. And so we pray today that many would turn from their sin and find hope and security and salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that was ever given. We thank you, Father, that we can explore your word now, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know about you, but my morning started quite early. As most, when there's children in the house, well, even sometimes... My wife wakes up quite early too, and so she was up, I think, even before Lydia was awake, so excited for all of the, uh, what was about to take place, the anticipation. And uh, I was ready to maybe sly in, maybe in a few more minutes, but it, wasn't, it was time to get up. Uh, the, the, uh, Lydia was raring to go. It was probably, I, uh, my mother was on uh, the, the phone with us talking, and she uh, she recalled to us all how early I used to get up on Christmas Day, and I would be up quite early, and probably sent back to bed a few times before it was time to uh, to get up. And but I heard this morning that Lydia, when she woke up, she just read in her bed for a while because she knew it was too early. Uh, so, but then she came in and announced that it was Christmas Day. So anyway, we we have those memories and have enjoyment. But we know with Christmas there always comes gifts. And I want us to think this morning on gifts. And uh, today there are many gifts that are going to be exchanged. And you, don't, you find a present and perhaps it's wrapped up and with a pretty bow on it. And um, I'm not one for making things look so fancy, but there are many that are able to do that. And uh, usually the presents that my wife receives are kind of the wrapping is not so nice. But all the presents that I receive, I feel so guilty because they're just so wrapped nicely. And the bows are in the right place and the ribbon and all these Things that go into making a present look so beautiful. Uh, but we exchange gifts, especially this time of year. And I want us to think then, as we are reminded in the gift giving that we receive of the greatest gift that was ever given. The greatest gift that was ever given. And we find that here in Luke chapter 2 of the announcement of the birth of the Lord Jesus. And so I want us to think of the greatest gift for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And He is the greatest gift that was ever given, ever received. And I would like for you to notice with me then, He's not only God's gift to us, but He's a number of things as He was presented to the world. And I would like for us to focus on this. Several truths concerning the greatest gift that was given. 
And we come up to the early parts of the chapter and we find that there is an announcement that there is to be this taxing or this census that takes place. And everyone is to go back to their city of origin or their home place. He was in the house and lineage of David as it says. And so I want us to think of us first of all is that God's gift to us was sent. God's gift to us was sent. And it says that they went... It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because of the, he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. The scripture says that he was sent from Nazareth. And we know that was where the Lord Jesus grew up. That was their home area. But we know that he was of the house and the lineage of David. So they traveled to the city of David, which was Bethlehem. And Bethlehem was approximately 112 kilometers uh, from Nazareth south. And so they were up in the Galilean region, but they would always be called going up because it would be down toward Jerusalem. So they'd be going kind of in an upward direction, but they would go to Bethlehem. Now, anyone that travels in the condition that Mary was in would know that it, it's not always pleasant to travel when you're nine months pregnant. In fact, they say at times it's dangerous to go on planes when you're nine months pregnant. Oftentimes what has happened in the past is there's an emergency landing at a certain place because there's a woman about to have a baby. And sometimes a baby, babies are born on planes. We know that they didn't take a plane. In fact, it was what if I would have imagined very uncomfortable as they would have journeyed. Uh, by foot and and she would have no doubt they would have had something for her to ride on as they made their way to Bethlehem as he tried to care for her in her very fragile state and so we know that they were sent to Bethlehem because the king had ordered a census for the Roman Empire there was no mail in census as we have today. There wasn't a long form and all the, those things that we have to fill in. But instead, everyone had to travel to their own town or their city of origin. And it puts me in mind of the, the fact that we could say that God's gift was sent. Was sent. Why was he sent to Bethlehem? Well, it tells us in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. This is why he was sent. And the, the Bible foretold that he would be born in Bethlehem. So if he was born in Nazareth, that would be the wrong place. Scripture would not be fulfilled. God would not be true to his word. And it was another sign of, of the fact of who he was, where he would be born. Remember when the wise men came and they said, Where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we've seen a star in the east who would come to worship him. What did they do? They pulled out the scrolls. They found the prophet Micah, verse 2 of chapter 5. But thou, Bethlehem of Freta, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah... Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And so in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, we know that yes, he was sent to Bethlehem, but ultimately he was sent from above. He was sent from above. And we gather that from this, this verse and other verses that we're going to look at here. And so Bethlehem was going to be the place of birth. It would be the place where he should come forth. Who would he be? He would be the ruler of Israel. Who would he be? The king of Israel. Not only the king of Israel, but he would be God. It says, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And so this prophecy speaks of his place. It speaks of his position. And it speaks of his person. That he would be born in Bethlehem. That he would be the king. But that he would, is the everlasting father. That he is very God in the flesh. As Isaiah tells us, notice what it tells us over in the Gospel of John chapter 1. We're reminded that he came from, he was sent to Bethlehem, but he was sent from above. It says in John 1 and verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. In verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so we have here mentioned that He became, He dwelt among us. He was made flesh, very God, made flesh, dwelling among us, and, and, and us being able to witness His glory. The glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Another verse is chapter 8 and verse 23. John chapter 8, verse 23. And Jesus said unto them, And He said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. He says, ye are from beneath, I am from above. And so, yes, he was sent from above. In fact, it was from above that he went back after his resurrection over in Acts chapter 1. And we have here recorded in verse 8 and 9, Acts 1, 8 and 9, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And when we think of the Lord Jesus being sent from above, he, was, he returned to the heavens, he returned to glory, completing all the work that he was set out to do. And then he sent the promise of the Holy Spirit of God who would not just be with us, but he would indwell us and he would equip us and he would teach us and he would lead us and guide us and strengthen us and embolden us and help us. He says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He would, Jesus was going above so that he might fulfill and send the promise of the Holy Spirit in, in, a, in a new way. The Holy Spirit had always been present, but his ministry changed in the day of Pentecost. His ministry changed in that He indwelled the church. He sealed the church unto the day of redemption. And He is the earnest of our inheritance. He is the down payment of that which one day we will fully receive. We belong to the Lord. We are His child. And so, He was sent to Bethlehem, but ultimately He was sent from above. And so we can think about this as they journey down to um, Bethlehem and all these gifts that are sent this time of year and Various postage are put on various things to send different places. Well, here was Jesus had been preparing to be born and he's being sent down to Bethlehem to fulfill exactly as Scripture had foretold his birth. Notice the second thing with me. It says that God's gift was delivered. Now, I've taken two aspects of this word delivered and we'll notice it here in verse number 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. It says she was delivered. And I think of this, the gift of the Lord Jesus was not delivered like we receive gifts. No, and it tells us that he was delivered. It tells us that Mary was delivered of this child that she was holding. But, it was, but in another sense, the Lord Jesus was delivered unto us. And so the Lord Jesus was brought forth. Mary was delivered of this child. It says here in verse number 6 that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And so there was this that came forth and that which had never before. We recognize that Mary was one that was called to bear the Christ child. She was told that she was with child. A virgin birth had never happened. That was another great sign of the coming of the Messiah. Uh, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. And so he was delivered on to us. She was delivered of the, of, the, of the birth, of the pregnancy, and he was brought on to us. She brought forth her firstborn son. 
And I thought about this, babies bring much joy when they're born and, and the maternity ward at the hospital is a place where there's so much joy and as the children come home and, and often there are pictures uh, when babies first show up and, they, and uh, lots of pictures of them as they begin to grow, but there's so much joy of the birth uh, of a birth and how much greater joy then is there that Jesus was born, the Son of God. And how much joy was there that the wise men traveled bringing their kingly gifts to the, to the Christ child, to the, him that is born, the king of the Jews. They were so excited that a king was born. And they brought the gifts to the Lord Jesus. Much excitement when babies are born. How much more excitement and joy there is that this child is born. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. We're going to think about the angel's response to his birth here in just a moment. But we are reminded then of of the prophecy concerning his birth. And and it is spoken of in Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 and 5. Galatians 4 and verse 4 and 5. And it says this, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. This is the purpose of His coming. And it says, it it happened, His coming came at the fullness of the time, when the fullness of the time was come. What's that time? That was God's perfect time. That was God's perfect plan. When you think about things in the days of the Lord Jesus... Uh, just how much stability when we think about the, the Roman government at that time, they were under rule over so much of the land. We think about the language at that time. There was a common language among uh, that was used in a large area of the land. There was stability. There was language. There was all these things that came together to bring forth, to allow there to be stability. And, and we think that was all part of God's timing as well for all those things to happen so that they could travel, so that there could be a, a, a decree sent forth that they were to go to Bethlehem because they were living in Nazareth. Why else would anyone travel when they were uh, uh, so uh, pregnant at that time? No one would. They would keep them safe and they would keep them comfortable. And uh, knowing that this was the Christ child, they would have uh, had her just be as, uh, you know, as comfortable as could be. And no doubt when he was born, as we find, they, they made their best to be able to lay him in a manger, wrap him in swaddling clothes, as we're going to read. The very best that you would give. But they recognized, they knew that this was no ordinary baby because they already had all the angelic visits. They knew this was the Son of God. And so he was sent and made of a woman, made under the law. What was the purpose? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. When the fullness of the time was come, and there is another fullness of the time that's coming. And there is a time on God's calendar when the Bible says that Jesus is going to come. He's going to rapture the church home to be with himself. There is going to come a period of tribulation upon the earth. There is going to come a time of of judgment but then his millennial reign upon the earth and there are times yet to be fulfilled and uh, we recognize that God has a calendar he is never late and it was just the right time just the right place and we find it was a lowly birth a lowly place where the Lord Jesus was born and so God's gift to us was sent it was also delivered as she was delivered and he was uh, brought forth And then notice the third thing with me, and it is what we find that God's gift to us was wrapped, was wrapped. And it says in verse number seven, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Now, this would have been material that she would have prepared uh, beforehand, this would have been, uh, uh, it was tradition that the Jewish babies would be wrapped in these strips of cloth. And uh, Mary and Joseph would have prepared this knowing that the child could have been born along their journey. And uh, so they brought it with them and they wrapped the Lord Jesus in this very special way. And then they laid him in the manger. 
And the Lord Jesus was wrapped, laid in a manger as He came into this world. And then I thought about the Lord Jesus as the Bible speaks of His life and as it speaks of the cross. And when He completed the work on the cross, He was wrapped in this little swaddling clothes and laid in the manger. But then the Bible tells us that He was taken down from the, from the cross in Luke chapter 23. He was taken down from the cross. And what does His birth have to do with His death? Well, I just saw this picture as they came and they asked for the body of the Lord Jesus. And in verse 53, And He took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone where never man was before laid. And the day of, was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. But we know that we find the Lord Jesus in His birth. What do they do? They, they take Him so carefully and they wrap Him in these swaddling bands and they lay Him in this manger. And what does Nicodemus do? He takes the Lord Jesus' body so carefully, that body that grew, that body that completed His earthly ministry, that did not sin, was absolutely sinless, that body that endured the cross, the nail prints in His hands and His feet, the thorns in His brow, the beatings and the scourgings, that body that endured our very sin upon Himself on the tree. And he, that body that He said, uh, it is finished, and He bowed His head and gave up the ghost. And that body that remained on the tree, they took and they wound so carefully and so gently with the, with the cloth that was prepared and they laid him in the manger. The beginning of his life, he was taken and wrapped so carefully and laid in a manger. And the end of his life, taken, wrapped so carefully, laid in a tomb where that sepulcher of Joseph of Arimathea, and never a man was yet laid, and they took him and laid him there in that tomb for those three days and those three nights. And we're so thankful that the Lord Jesus endured the cross for us so that we could have forgiveness of sins, so that we could have salvation. And even in His birth, there's a, there's a picture of, of His sacrifice and of His death for us on the cross. And so the Lord Jesus was taken and He was wrapped. He was delivered. He was sent. But God's gift to us was presented. And this presentation... It did not come to the courts of Herod. It did not come to uh, the, the, the Jewish leaders, the rabbis and the Pharisees. But the announcement and the presentation came to some lowly shepherds who were on the side of the hills watching over their flocks by night. And it says that this announcement came by way of the angel that announced his birth in verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came about upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And so the angels came. They sounded forth His birth that the Christ child had been born. The Messiah had come. And so this announcement came by way of the angels. And this presentation of the gift was witnessed by the shepherds in verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even on to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. So they not only heard, the announcement was not only made to them by the, by the angels of heaven. And we think about birth announcements that are made today and a little notice goes in the paper or maybe Facebook or something like this. God sends the angels of glory and He allows the heavens to shine to announce the fact that the Savior had been born. Oh, that must have been like that night and that quiet night as they were tending their flocks. Something like they had never seen before. The glories of heaven, the glory of God shining all around as the birth of Jesus is announced, the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one. And so they come diligently and they, they, they come immediately and they find the, the Lord Jesus just as they had said. 
And so they witness the fact that, yes, this is the Christ child that was foretold and that was born. And now the shepherds go and they proclaim to the world the fact that Jesus had been born. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. What were the shepherds? They were witnessing. They were God's witness program that hour. It says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And so their lives had been drastically changed and they went forward with God's message and God's gift in presenting that message to others that Jesus had been born. And so we ask ourselves today that God's gift has been presented to us. The gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, has been presented to us, presented to the whole world. And we have an opportunity. He calls us to respond. What will we do with his gift of eternal life? We can either receive him or we can reject him. We know it's a personal decision that we all have to make in our lives. Notice what it tells us in John chapter 8 and verse 24. John 8 verse 24. We looked at this Wednesday night in the passage that I was reading. And it says in verse 24, Jesus says these words. And so, so a sobering message that he gives. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What will we do with the message that Jesus has given us? He says if we do not believe upon him. We will die in our sins. To die in our sins is the worst thing that could ever happen. To die in our sins is what's happening every minute of every day. Souls are leaving this world not ready to meet the Lord. Unforgiven in their sins. How thankful we can be for forgiveness of sins that's found through Jesus Christ. The gift of God which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we can share with others that same message that the shepherd shared. So that others might not die in their sins. Because Jesus warned, if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And I thought of what the scripture says. That many came unto him. His, uh, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. His own received him not. And so then what can we have this Christmas? We can have the joy of the Lord Jesus. We can have the, the joy that thrills our soul because first of all we know this one who was born. This one God's gift to us. It wasn't just to Mary and Joseph but it was to the whole world. We needed a Savior and God sent Him for us because He knew how desperately we needed our sins forgiven. We could not, we could not forgive sins, find forgiveness any other way. So God sent His gift to us. He sent the gift that was sent, a gift that was delivered, a gift that was wrapped and presented, and as a gift that we can receive today. And if we just bow our heads and receive Him as our personal Savior, we're so thankful this morning that so many of us here know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But we know that the message of the Gospel is going out and through the online ministry as well. And we pray that if there's anyone that has never received God's gift of eternal life, Jesus offers it to us free. All we need to do is receive Him. Come on to Him by faith. Repenting of our sin. Inviting Jesus Christ into our heart. And He will surely come in. But as many as received Him. To them gave He the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on His name. Which were born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. Father thank You for Your Word today. Thank You for the challenge to our hearts. Thank you for the greatest gift that was ever given, the gift of thyself. We thank you for all that was accomplished for our salvation on the cross. And we thank you, Lord, that we serve a risen Savior, one who's coming today. And so we celebrate his birthday today. We celebrate the fact that he came, that he was brought into this human world. And this world that was so fallen and cursed with sin, yet he came as a sinless one. And we thank you that he offers forgiveness of sins. And He gives us joy in our hearts, even this Christmas morning. We pray, Father, for those that are struggling, going through hardship this Christmas. Those that are faced with loneliness and sickness. And some that are discouraged. Father, we pray that You would strengthen each one. We pray for those parts of the world today that are experiencing war. 
And we thank you, Lord, that the Prince of Peace is coming. And Father, we look forward to his coming even today. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and give thee thanks. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your songbooks. We're going to close together with a hymn. Number 105. Number 105. Oh, come all ye faithful. We'll sing this and our service will be over. We thank you for coming. May the Lord bless you and have a Merry Christmas. Stand if you're able. So